in addition to being um, National Poetry Month and Ramadan and Irish Heritage Month, um, today is also National Children's Authors Day. Did you know that? National Children's Authors Day. We have um, uh, I'm, this board of Boris Teed is pretty phenomenal. So I want to introduce them first. Rescue Poetics, come up here. So I'm going to do this first piece, which is the first piece I memorized uh, deliberately because I was nervous. In the event of my untimely demise, let it never be said that I went quietly, without love in my heart, rage on my soul or thoughts on my mind. Instead, let me be remembered for the loves I've had. The convictions I stubbornly held onto, the lack of filter from head to lips, thoughts spewing forth without fear. You see, I'm not afraid to die. I'm not afraid to be forgotten. I am afraid of being in this life as if already dead. Of not having the passion of my heart ignited or of having that fire extinguished. I'm not afraid to fly past clouds, pick blazing flowers in a meadow of midnight blue. I am afraid of falling from the sky, tumbling to the earth without possibility of being caught because there was no body in sight. I'm not afraid of pain, hardship, or sacrifice. Badges of unconditional love, giving till nothing remains, and then finding more to give. I am afraid of heartbreak, thoughtless treatment of my value and sentiment by the one who proclaims to love me forever. 
In the event of my untimely demise, let it never be said that I didn't speak my mind. When told to hold my tongue, struggle for release. When bound by the expectations of others, break free to be who I am. In the event of my untimely demise, let me go as I've always wanted, in the throes of passion. Thank you. So this piece that I'm, this, uh, that I'm going to close out with was recently accepted to Oya Drum Magazine. And, thank you. <laughs> and it's up for publication, I guess, sometime in the spring or summer. And it's called Three Not So Simple Questions. What are you doing here? I fill this space in anticipation of who or what will reach me, change me, make me better, so that I, in turn, can share that universal wisdom with another, create a chain of existence from body to body, mind to mind, spirit to spirit. Who do you think you are? A constant evolution to the next. I bring the light of those who seek to voice their own stories, her stories, our stories, one and all, the roars of queens, quiet within infinite flow, chaos in undulating silence, breath from lungs starved by quietude, in service to the universe when she needs me to be. Queen among queens, goddess connected with goddesses. Where are you going? With goals set far beyond my vision, the path before me seems at times clear, well-defined under the blown dust of past lives, away from lessons uninvited. It's step with the ancestors, and yet the finite confines of mortality, littered by obstacles along the path of self, delay entry into another life the life that I am meant for. At the mouth, I dare to look back at breadcrumbs, scattered on a path I no longer travel. Maybe I like that. Today, I don't know how true that is. I do know that I have accepted and I have cut from me the desire, the need, the fear to return to the devil I know. Thank you. In addition to being the Vice President of Royal Seat Inc., uh, Rescue Poetics is the first Latina and first woman poet laureate for Jersey City, New Jersey. <laughs> um, we are going to have some cake. I'm so excited about that. But we want to make sure that we um, give a nod to um, poets Patterson Poets of the Past, Allen Ginsberg is one of those poets. He graduated from Eastside High School and his um, a plaque, a plaque honoring him is in the Hall of Fame here at, in Patterson at Eastside High School. And so I want to read a little bit of um, Ginsberg. I'm having a hard time pulling it up fast enough. I just had it, but you know, these are touch screens and your girl is touching the screen. So, this is called America by Allen Ginsberg. America, I've given you all and now I'm nothing. America, $2.27, January 17, 1956. I can't stand my own mind. America, when will we end the human war? Go fuck yourself with atom bombs. I don't feel good, don't bother me. Don't write my poem till I'm in my right mind. America, when will you be angelic? When will you take off your clothes? When will you look at yourself through the grave? When will you be worthy of your million 
trifle sky, I don't know this word, truck sky tights. America, why are your libraries full of tears? America, when will you send your e eggs to India? I'm sick of your insane demands. When can I go to the supermarket and buy what I need with my good looks? <laughs> America, after all, it is you and I who are perfect, not the next world. Your machinery is too much for me. You made me want to be a saint. There must be some other way to settle this argument. Burroughs is in Tangiers. I don't think he'll come back. It's sinister. Are you being sinister or is this some form of practical joke? I'm trying to come to the point. I refuse to give up my obsession. America, stop pushing. I know what I'm doing. America, the plum blossoms are falling. I haven't read the newspaper for months. Every day somebody goes to trial for murder. America, I feel sentimental about wobblies. America, I used to be a communist when I was a kid. I'm not sorry. I smoke marijuana every chance I get. I sit in my house for days on end and stare at the roses in the closet. When I go to Chinatown, I get drunk and never get laid. My mind is made up there's going to be trouble. You should have seen me reading Marx. My psychoanalyst thinks I'm perfectly right. I won't say the Lord's Prayer. I have mystical visions and cosmic vibrations. America, I still haven't told you what you did to Max after he came over from Russia. I'm addressing you. Are you going to let your emotional life run by, be run by Time Magazine? I'm obsessed by Time Magazine. I read it every week. Its cover stares at me every time I slink past the corner candy store. I read it in the basement of the Berkeley Public Library. It's always telling me about responsibility. Businessmen are serious. Movie producers are serious. Everybody's serious but me. It occurs to me that I am America. I am talking to myself again. Asia is rising against me. I haven't got a Chinaman's stance. I'd better consider my national resources. My national resources consist of two joints of marijuana, millions of genitals, and unpublishable private literature that jet planes 1,400 miles an hour and 25,000 mental institutions. I say nothing about my prisons, nor the millions of underprivileged who live in my flower pots under the light of 500 suns. I have abolished the whorehouses of France. Tangiers is next to go. My ambition is to be president, despite the fact that I am a Catholic. America, how can I write a holy litany in your silly mood? I will continue like Henry Ford. My strokes are as individual as his automobiles, more so they're all different sexes. America, I will sell you strophes, $2,500 a piece, $500 down on your old strophe. America, free Tom Mooney. America, save the Spanish loyalists. America, Sacco and Vanzetti must not die. America, I am the Scotts Burroughs boys. America, when what? America, when I was seven, mama took me to communist cell meetings. They sold us garbanzos, a handful per ticket. A ticket cost a nickel, and the speeches were free. Everybody was angelic and sentimental about the workers. It was so sincere. You have no idea what a good thing the party was in 1835. Scott Mary was a grand old man, a real mensch, mother blower, and silk strikers. Earwig made me cry. I saw the Yiddish orator, Israel, I made her a plane. Everybody must have been a spy. America, you don't really want me to go to war. 
America is them bad Russians. Them Russians, them Russians, and them Chinamen, and them Russians. The Russians want to eat us alive. The Russians power mad. She wants to take our cars from our garages. Her want to grab Chicago. Her needs a Red Reader's Digest. Her want her auto planes in Siberia. Him big bureaucracy running our filling stations. That no good. Uh, him make Indians learn read. Him need big black niggers. Ha. Her make us all work 16 hours a day help. America, this is quite serious. America, this is the impression I get from looking in the television set. America, is this correct? I better get tight down to the job. I might, um, pardon me, I better get right down to the job. It's true, I don't want to join the army or turn labs or precision parts factories. I'm nearsighted and I'm psychopathic anyway. America, I'm putting my queer shoulders to the wheel. Berkeley, January 17, 1956, Allen Ginsberg, Patterson, New Jersey. And now, the multi-award winning Amira Shabazz Malau, who is um, a poet, a photographer, a painter, a sister, a creator, of when women speak and when people speak. She is doing crazy, amazing artistry. She is succinctly referred to as a creative, and it is our honor to have her in the house up in Patterson. Um, so Patterson, please welcome the amazing Amira Shabazz I just know that sister, she's, she's not right. <laughs> it's already nerve wracking to come up here. And... <laughs> If she's the only person that can take somebody else's poem and make you believe that she wrote it. <laughs> she's not like that. So, you know, she's more than the poet laureate, she's the queen laureate, because she does that all the time. Thank you. Um, thank you for that introduction. I almost didn't recognize who you were talking about. Um, I wrote a poem this morning, and so I'll be stumbling through it, but I'm not shy with that. Um, I liked it immediately, so I'm going to let you like it. The title of the poem is, Can We Be Black and Not Sing? Mm. Can we be born black and not sing? Can we sit on boardwalk edges and let our feet dangle and do nothing but fish and not be lazy? Can we define ourselves even though it's long after we've been forgotten and all we know, all we know is when we hear ukweli, 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 we recognize it, no meaning attached. It is from our soul, we recognize home. Can we pull, can we pull any crayon from the crayon box and not, and not identify it with any person or people? Can we do this and be okay and not confused because the black crayon never looked like us in the first place? It never looked like us in first grade or second grade or college. And it doesn't look like us now, but we said okay. Can we, can we use a magic eraser that ain't really magic, but it's real to explain our innocence? The only curse we bear is a bare heart that evil used to clear. Clear our minds and bend our souls, erasing our connection to days of old, our beginnings. Can we stop carrying the original sin? Can we? All our people, all our people, all our people are not not our people, they not our tribe, they not. Can we, can we go back to when we arrived here and receive libation and introduction and not be scorned or not try to attach a soul, a black soul to every mishap of man and willfully ask, no demanding, was he black? Can we go back to Motown rules and girls and Jews, etiquettes of life and dignity and wearing true crowns, not the ones found on the ground, wiping their smut from peaks and sparkling jewels because we knew all along we are not meant to be them because we 
is we? Can we throw down the mask and pick up, pick up and bask and bask in the knowledge of self and rightfully own our own existence and speak evil, speak evil back to evil, force the devil back to hell, baptize our mind from seduction that has us wrapped in the reduction of our own selves, elevate our own nature to the throne of creation, pull back our station, we are, we are man, I mean womb, man. When you found them bones in Jebel, that's Africa. Did you know? Did you know? Did you know? And not one African, not one African mass, mass a soul out of existence. They speak, they speak, they speak. Thank you, phone. And not one African mass, master soul out of existence. They speak, they speak rituals, rituals of sacredness, rights of creation, life, death, values. Let's speak, let's speak, let's speak to God. God, y'all, let's speak to God. And sometimes, and sometimes they speak to fear, enemies beware. But not one speaks, not one, not one of them damn mass from Africa. Not one speaks to indignity or the malignity of stealing a body so far, so far and taking it so long. We wear the mask, we wear the mask through grin and God. You people are full of guile, and we ain't, we ain't grinning. We wear the mask. Can we see that God ain't white? Can we? Can we believe with this disbelief that he ain't black neither? Can we, can we unwrap this thing to understand that there are ways too many, there are way, way too many colors in the rainbow, and realize neither black nor white is one of them? Can we realize? Can we realize, can we think, can we think we are made from images that we see in reflections, reflections of nature pools where the bottom is always dirt and no, we gonna return there? We gonna, we gonna wade in the children, we, go, we gonna wade in the water, we gonna wade in the water children, we gonna wade in it neck deep as we clear the path, the path of lies, the lies that never seem to die. Can we wade in that water, can we wade in that water? Can we be black? Can we be black and do more than just sing? Oh, I'm sad that poem was born this morning. I want to talk about that. Born this morning. Um, we have uh, a song more people who are coming to the open mic. We have a uh, featured artist, uh, Jacquard Gillette, reading from his new book and his new uh, documentary project. But before we do that, we're going to have some cake. So, Coming up next is our featured poet, uh, Jacques Gillette. He is, thank you for finding the right button. That's too much. Jacques is um, a Patterson poet, he's an actor, he is a horticulturalist, which means he grows things, particularly things that you can't eat. And he spends an incredible amount of time at the community garden here in Patterson. And um, I appreciate that he spends his time doing some mutual aid in our community and you can see him on the big screen as well as on the stage and he is I'm going to let you find out your own adjectives for this brother um, his um, ebook is available right now he's going to tell you more about that and what I appreciate about this project I'm calling it a project because uh, there's a documentary associated with that as well. And really in my deep heart, there's gonna be more things coming out of this project that maybe he doesn't know about yet. And so I'm calling it a project, it's still alive. And um, he does not refer to the text as autobiographical, but I'm gonna call it autobiographical because when you read this text and I have read every word, you will, see, you will read what he's been reading. You can read the influences of his mind, and it might 
you, you, can, you can read power economics in it. You can read some of the other influences from great scholars that he has been reading and shared with us through synthesizing it and bringing it to the stage, page, screen. And so, without further ado, I'm gonna grab my cake. <laughs> and my strawberries. And leave you here for John Bergelet. You hear me out there? <laughs> you know what? No, no, no. You know what? I don't need this. I come before you from the world's congregation, from the souls of folks in the margins of all nations, the throwaway people, the go-away people, who you abuse and exploit, the hoe-away people, the serfs and the slaves who work to their graves, whose blood is in the soil and the streets that they paid, whose pain you avoided with the lies you recorded, their hopes, their dreams, their lives you destroyed. You fed them the myths of things that don't exist. You said justice for all, but injustice persists. The heights of the schemes you did by any means, you surges of oppression and killers of the dream. But now is the time for all whom to rise. Freedom's march to the promised land, eyes on the prize. A true coalition against this prohibition on justice and equity. It all came from a decision to benefit the few at the expense of the many. From race to class, your isms are plenty. It's always been your mantra to divide and to conquer because the fear in your heart gave birth to a monster. But all is not lost of our crops from this frost, because we can save the gardens of humanity at will and at cost. As we stare into the abyss, stare into the mist, darkest days, finest hours, have a power to resist. But in order to save we, it begins and ends with me, myself, and I, you, and thee. The person in the mirror, seeing things clearer, because there's room for all of us, and salvation is nearer. To all of us in this universal trust, as we march in defiance of the duty of our themes, fist raised high as all the saints sing. Power to the people by any means. I had a dream of left for the ring. Power to the people by any means. I had a dream of left for the ring. Power to the people by any means. I had a dream of left for the ring. Power to the people by any means. I had a dream left for the ring.
reaching everyone by expressing life, the rebel I am. Inspiring all mankind, yes I can. From man, woman, and child, to child, woman, and man. The world is before us, and this is where we stand. So we don't do this for the Oscars, Tony Emmys, or the Grammys. We're expressing life for what it is and all that it can be. Producing art that shows the beauty and the truth of humanity. Because we've been imprisoned to a status quo, chained to its insanity. This industry's affliction of constant repetition. Projects driven by profit-making addictions. Seek to leave art's existence in an ALS condition. But it's time for a new mission, an ethos, a new vision, a new way of living, an artist-like apparition. You see the culture of the game as you're addicted to the fame. But we should create things that matter for my hearts and our brains. See, now is the time for creativity is divine to express our true nature, that of a creator. And I live forever in that spirit until my last sunset and I'm passing the night because I am Rebel, a lot. And also, the death of the artist comes from the death on the artist. Billionaires and big tech take what's left from the artist. Mm -hmm. All right. You like that? Yes. Okay. You know, actually, I want to share um, two poems that's not in canon, just to switch it up a little bit. Um, you know how sometimes, well, you know how you know there's people who you know that are like you know around the way, like you don't really know them, but you speak to them and say, "Hey, what's up? How you doing?" Well, you know, this is one time. Um, it was this girl I knew, you know, round away girl, like what L. Cool J used to talk about. <laughs> and she was at the bus stop. And I was like, you know, I was on the phone, she was arguing, and I was walking out because I just ran out of milk. So, because I was like, man, God, man, that's a cinnamon toast. I'm to get that. So, I had to go to Sea Town. And, <laughs> sorry, I don't live by the whole thing. <laughs> So yeah, I had to go to Sea Town, and um, and as I was doing that, and she was on the phone, and and, and she was just, it, I could tell the conversation was getting intense, and she was just like, like even she started, you know, tearing up, and she was like, it's over, it's over, and and I just, I, I, as I'm walking, I was like, I just walked up to her, and I was just like, excuse me, Miss, what's the reason? Tell me why. Can I please wipe the pain from your eyes? Can I enter your world of wonders? Ease your heart and your mind. Can I give you that comfort and make you forget about the dudes who plundered or ripped your soul from your heart? Can I uplift you? Explain to you how your body's a temple? Make you forgive the things that you've been through? You know, maybe it's our time for you and I to do the things that kings and queens do. Okay, they have it. It happened like that. It was more like, I was like, you okay, man? problem on its own as these thoughts roam because I could have been secretly baptized in the abyss of the friend zone. But if I ask her, will it turn into a yes for laughing to begin to write a new chapter? Or is it pain in sight written in this book of life? The OK Cupid here, he grabbed his arrows and took a flight. I remember the first time that I seen her. My heart yelled at me, go meet her, go bring her. 
Maybe it's time for me to let my guard down. Let you see me for who I am as you enter my heart now. I wonder if she's a part of my destiny as I reach everyone by expressing life and she gets what's best for me. I have more than a day for you. Maybe one day a rain for you as I open up my heart to you. But I just want to be a part.
So I want to share this piece with you all to help further nurture this conversation and even possible solutions. And this piece is entitled, Power Nomic and Mops. Better ways to build wealth, to live forever and die free. Spiritually, physically, mentally, and economically. So let me break that one down properly. Changing your frame. Going from knowledge to a wise dome, I mean changing your brain. To a greater understanding of how to build wealth. Building for the family, community, and self. Collective participation for true power knowledge. Being a prosumer with democracy and economics. Controlling your own materials and cultures. In the robbery of your capital from the claws of these vultures. You don't have to go at it alone. Don't be a loner. Everybody can't be a boss, but they can be an owner. Ownership in the assets in which your lives depends on. Stocks in the companies whose products you spend on. Settling the scores with new business accords. Unionized labor co-chairing the boards. Workers cooperatives, no plantation operatives or systems. No more dead peasant victims. This economy abandons us, subjects and strands us. So let's buy back the blocks with community land trusts, community gardens, and community farms. Feeding the people to fix community homes. Let's explore UBI to level the inequities as long-term investments, not short-term discrepancies. Let's create family clubs of investments. And that could be one of the ways for reparations assessments. But for all layers of wealth, we must protect what life needs. Global sustainability, rejuvenation of seeds. Not for corporate greed, but for life itself to succeed. Because there's room for all of us, and all of us can achieve. You know, um, we tend to focus a lot on, you know, uh, the smaller things, you know, understandably, you know, so at times. But, you know, I think that we tend to sometimes fall short of the things, of, of the fact that we are much bigger than we come from, uh, a much greater existence, and that no matter what, to never forget that because of the fact that there's... There is such, how can I say this? Man, I lost words. <laughs> Don't mind that talking, look at you. <laughs> we are, we come from every single person, every single living thing. We all come from something bigger, something greater. Which is why this last piece I'm going to share with you is entitled The Big Picture. Look into the windows of my soul. You see the big picture. I'm from the book of Eli. My life is the full scripture. Because the idea I represent is so righteous yet scandalous. It's part of being a rebel is being a verbal vandalist. A universal type from a universal light. As the universal creator gave us universal light. For greater understanding. Through this journey of man and with the arts and the sciences. It's an age of wonder of alliances. Children of the cosmos, as we express our Picassos, as we embody a universe, our creations are colossal. Recognizing that this power is innate, from this glass prison we escape using the power to create. But make no mistake, because the world is at stake, and we need the audacity to inject our path and capacity to cure this catastrophe. See, it's all for one and it's one for all. Because we are universally connected as the universe is in us all. And we can live forever as we manifest into infinity. Because we are the carriers and the crucibles of everything that was, everything that is, and everything that ever will be. Peace and blessings.
soft voice person. I am not um, lesbian trained. So your girl needs a mic. Can I tell you a quick story? When I was in elementary, I didn't give you a chance to answer this. <laughs> when I was in elementary school, my mother used to scream at me because she couldn't hear me. I would, I can hear myself. And so I thought she could hear me too, and I would talk to her like, I heard that. But she didn't hear me, she'd go, I can't hear you! <laughs> I, and look, I didn't even learn to speak louder until like sophomore year of college. Some people know that it is poem. So for those of you who are not, the whole title is, you make me feel like poetry. Uh,
and um, this is my first time ever sharing anything that I've written publicly. So Woo! Yeah. 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 We love it. Uh, and we were back there. I told him I wrote something, and it was so emotional and vulnerable. He's like, "Oh, come share it." So, <laughs> That's him. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> um, but you know, writing can be very vulnerable, and I think that. Um, when something scares you, it's probably a good idea to do it. So that's what I'm doing. All yeah. right. All right. For the first time in my life, I'm the angry black woman. I can tell you exactly how it happened. Long story short, I've always wanted to be married. Growing up in the black church, I can remember being told as early as 12 years old, your breasts are for your husband and your babies. Sex is amazing within the covenant of marriage, and you can swing from the chandeliers when you get married. So what did I do? I became obsessed with marriage. I created a laser focus around marriage and chastity. Starting at age 16, I became a serial monogamous, trying to make relationships work with, boy, with men, boys really, who just weren't good fits. Although I knew deep down I was trying to fit a square peg in a round hole, I just kept hammering down twisting myself into pretzel shapes to make relationship work because I wanted to be married, because I needed to resolve my sexuality as a human with my desire to be right with God. And marriage was the only way to do that, or so I thought. Now don't get me wrong, these men were not bad men. They were the church guys and the good guys and the nerds of the world. I believe that if we remained abstinent and saved ourselves, then God would bless us with marriage doesn't work that way. Enter anger's first seed, confusion. Why wasn't it working when I was doing as I was told and being the good girl? The truth was being a good person may not make you a suitable partner. These good guys, they struggled with depression, low, low drive, low self-esteem, low accountability. But hey, no one's perfect, right? So to make up for their humanness, I did the emotional labor of endless late night free girlfriend therapy sessions. I sent job postings. I encouraged and spoke life. I went half on meals and outings because that's how you hold a man down, right? Yet still no ring. Did I mention these men were unable to protect me? I remember three distinct incidents in which I was required to stand up for myself while my little boyfriend stood to the side as a peer, or in one case, a bitter baby mama, verbally attacked me. Enter anger's second seed, frustration. Deep down in my soul, I knew these were not men I could create a family with, so I exited each of these relationships. I did it scared, but I did it. Eventually, 35 rolled around, the age affectionately known as the danger zone in the manosphere. I knew that if something didn't change, I may never marry or have children. So I took a year off of dating to refocus on myself. I decided to create the life I'd always wanted. I hired a coach to help me recondition my mindset. I studied about hypergamy. I participated in boot camps on the art of charm. I did deep therapy work. I locked my hair. I even started traveling the world. This was a new me. She was thriving. She knew herself. She knew her strengths and her weaknesses. She knew what she wanted and wasn't afraid to honor it. So with the renewed confidence, I decided to re-enter the Jaden world. And let me tell you, at first it was fun. I managed to line up multiple dates a week. I knew how to unlock eyes with men. My social calendar was full and I was dating people with resources and vision. Marriage must be around the corner, right? Wrong. Enter my anger, fully planted, germinated, and watered over time. Rage. Unlike the quote, good guys, these accomplishment, accomplished men have no struggles with low self-esteem. And why should they? Apparently, women are clamoring over them like ants on fallen fried chicken at a black southern cookout in the middle of the summer. <laughs> These men barrel over the needs and wants of the people around them, expecting the world to accommodate them. The idea of mutuality in relationships does not exist in their world. These men expect a pat on the head, on the head for demonstrating values like honesty, not lying. Fidelity, not cheating, and decency, not manipulating. Meanwhile, these men are happy to tell anyone that will listen that they could just pick a wife if they wanted to. 
They boldly make advances to try to attain your body with zero promises of security. These few black men want it all, and they are given it all simply for doing what black women have been doing in masses, taking care of themselves and being productive citizens of the world. So these, uh, where am I here? these men are narcissists <laughs> convinced that they are God's gift and should therefore be treated as such. Regardless of whether they are partnered or not, they will place themselves and their interests as the priority, while you and your needs are lucky to get a close third. These men are providers, but they are terrible partners. So, I am mad as hell. I can spend money to work on my look. I can be fixed. I can spend thousands of dollars on coaching. I can go to therapy. I can set boundaries. I can love myself deeply and even be wildly happy with my life, because happy girls are the prettiest girls, right? Yet contrary to the advice of millionaire dating gurus, none of it will be enough. Well, you know what? Keep your sorry partnership. If kindness, care, humility, and accountability are too much to ask, I don't want it. Perhaps the problem is not me at all, or black women for that matter. Perhaps we don't need to learn to love ourselves more or to learn to be alone. Perhaps we don't need to be more feminine, more fit, more friendly. Perhaps we don't need to figure out how to live our best lives so love will come. Perhaps the problem isn't us at all. Merely from birth, women are socialized to view marriage and being chosen as their measure of value, their life's purpose, their happiness, and even their spiritual covering. And many of us are trying our best, but we are trying our best to function in a system that's designed for our collective failure. We are attempting to partner with men who are crushed under the weight of patriarchy, racism, and capitalism, and therefore believe that finances, status, coochies accumulated, and proximity to whiteness are a measure of one's worth and value. The majority haven't the slightest idea on how to truly love themselves, let alone how to be loving partners in a non-transactional relationship. Yet the blame is placed on the black woman, and that shit is infuriating. So today, I'm choosing to see past it all. I'm choosing to see that love, true love, is not just a feeling, but actions of sacrifice, compromise, and service extended over time. Rather than placing, placing it as a measure of my sanctity and womanhood, I'm choosing to take ma marriage off of the pedestal. It's been demoted to a simple and logical choice that will be made if I encounter a man who's a suitable partner. I refuse to be miserable for the sake of being partner. I choose to see the beauty of singleness, and in the words of Maya Angelou, it's never lonesome in Babylon. So, contrary to their predict predictions and attempts and attempted jabs about me dying alone, I will die surrounded by the love of community I've already built. It's a community comprised of family, friends, godchildren, adopted children, churches, and organizations. I will have the love of God the love of self, and the love of others, I will lack nothing, regardless of the presence of a male, and I know that burns them up. So I guess we will all just burn with rage. Thank you. <laughs> William Charles Williams is one of the poets um, who live, work, thrive. Um, that's the definition about Patterson poets, live, work, or play in Patterson. So he works here in Patterson, but he's actually from Rutherford, and they are very territorial about that. <laughs> <laughs> and so William Carlos Williams, we claim, um, in part because he wrote the, um, the, the longest Patterson poem ever, several books long. And um, that's a big deal because he was a physician, and he would write poetry that was could fit on the prescription pad in between mm. patients. So his poetry is very short. So I picked three of them because they're so short. They're just a prescription um, for you uh, to read. And then we're going to hear from Graham. Is that all right? This first one, Prescription Length, is one of the most famous of his poems. It is called, This Is Just to Say. I have eaten the plums that were in the icebox, and which you were probably saving for breakfast. Forgive me, they were delicious. So sweet and so cold. 
So this one is called Peace on Earth. The archer is awake. The swan is flying. Gold against blue, an arrow is lying. There is hunting in heaven. Sleep safe till tomorrow. The bears are abroad. The eagle is screaming. Gold against blue, their eyes are gleaming. Sleep, sleep safe till tomorrow. The sisters lie with their arms intertwining, gold against blue, their hair is shining. The serpent writhes, onion is, Orion is listening, gold against blue, his sword is glistening. Sleep, there is hunting in heaven. Sleep safe until tomorrow. I chose that one because of gold and blue is that Ukrainian color, and I thought it was interesting that mm -hmm. it was called Peace on Earth mm -hmm. and had those colors in it. Mm -hmm. And lastly, proof of immortality, William Carlos Williams, before we hear from Grant's poems. Proof of immortality. For there is one thing braver than all flowers, richer than clear gems, wider than the sky, immortal and unchangeable, whose powers transcend reason love and sanity, and thou, beloved, art that godly thing, marvelous and terrible, in glance all injured, Juno roused against heaven's king, and thy name, lovely one, is ignorance. William Carlos Williams. Mm. Okay. space that what he comes up with is just brilliant and I am just so honored to have him be um, like I just wanted to come and be here with, with you and do the class. I was like really? Okay, that's cool. And we had a really good time and he produced some, some amazing things and so um, no pressure to be amazing. <laughs> no pressure. Um, Grand Squad. Everybody's words are so beautiful. I, I want to do something tonight, so it's, um, it's a, a short one. Uh, it's called We Are Closer. Uh, inflation not conflated. When will the green gardens, nourished and harvested by our family and friends, be greater than the uncaring, profit minded power that says what we eat and how much it costs, and whether it nourishes or kills? The garden of hope, the garden of worker bees, the people's garden to give one tenth. Almunir and all the rest. When will our gardens grow over the metal and plastic in neon? Soon, I think. In my lifetime, I pray. And believe that we will consume apples grown by our own hands, for our own bodies. Day by day, bite by bite, hug by hug, smile by smile, we grow closer. So we don't have any more people for the open mic, and you heard our. Um you heard our incredible, incredible um, features. They were fantastic. Can we clap again for them? <laughs>
time, if you like. Would you like that? Yeah. Okay, so I'll be some more clean, and um, and then I'm going to encourage you to eat more, and then um, we're going to go home. How about that? <laughs> Unless you have some more open mic. Okay, so um, how about Brown Girl? Brown Girl! You don't have to cry no more, no. Today, the eyes looking at you will judge you for the color of your heart, no matter the color of the eyes. Your grandmother and her grandmother knew nothing of the skin-free joys of your life. Every single walking step for them tested their spirit. They prayed that the precious Lord would take their hand Yes. They were weak sometimes, true, but they persevered, brown girl, for you. They prayed that someday their trial will end. Yes, you're still a babe now, not far removed from the suckle of your mother, but light years from the nappy-colored, second-class citizen's label of your foremothers. Now, you're a girl, simply. Free to play, to dream, to sing, to inspire, to be whomever you decide, brown girl. You don't have to cry no more, no. Leave your eyes clear to see the fights of your generation. We have left much work for you to do. Leave your mind clear to find ways that we did not know needed changing. Leave your heart free to dream of dreams that we dared not dream about. Leave your anger alone. Replace it with the triumphs of the 200 year old war that your mothers fought for you to be free of tears, brown girl. You don't have to cry no more. Celebrate your hair, your skin, your hips, your waist, your backside, hold your head up high and let your eyes glisten. Brown girl, you don't have to cry no more, no. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, people of Patterson and beyond, thank you for celebrating National Poetry Month with Wordseed Inc. And the someone so we can fill up the yes, space yes. on April 30th and uh, we're going to play some music. Okay. So what else is going on with Word Seed Inc? A lot of stuff um, but really importantly I want you to remember to mark your calendars right now for October 1 and 2 for
So we've merged the writing conference um, at the University of Washington with the Patterson Poetry Festival on October 3rd. And so we'll be having a national and international festival on October 3rd, and don't miss it. Because it's one, absolutely 100% free, but you can always make a donation to a nonprofit. And um, that is all. Any questions, concerns, comments before we go? Then cheer for National Poetry Fund. <laughs> <laughs>